so hello everyone so this channel is dedicated to WSO2 API manager series so let's get started so my name is Kumar Gaurav and I have total of 12 years of IT experience with more than four years of experience in WSO2 products I'm a WSO2 certified professional and holds five certifications at the time of recording of this session my key interest areas includes digital transformation, open source software, integration, API management, identity management, cloud, Docker, Kubernetes, DevOps, DevSecOps. So the purpose of this series is to provide a hands-on lab exercise for different use cases of WS2 API Manager version 4. However, this is the introductory session on API MV4, so stay tuned for upcoming videos on hands-on lab exercise so what we are going to see in this particular session we will look after api manager version 4 we'll see about the overview of this particular product followed by the capabilities the key concepts with respect to api management wc2 api management architecture and finally wc2 api gateway so let's see the overview of the product so wso2 which is web services oxygenated it has it's a company having a different products in api management integration and identity and access management space so here we are talking about uh, wso2 api manager version 4 product so this is a fully open source api management platform and it helps in api designing api publishing api lifecycle management application development api security rate limiting and other api governance strategies api manager also gives uh, the helpful insights of the apis usage information via the analytics component and uh, the and the other aspects of the product usage okay so although this product comes with the open source edition however we can also have a subscription sub available for the particular product. The subscription is available for the product support, patches and upgrades. There is a, a important note that starting with the API Manager version 4, WSO2 has provided the support for the cloud-based analytics platform for API usage, which is Corio. And uh, if you would like to have uh, on-prem analytics, then uh, we can also uh, set up the same using the, the ELK based uh, the product, which is Elasticsearch, Logstash and Kibana. So now look after the capabilities or the core capabilities of uh, WSO2 API Manager version 4. So the first core capability is to develop deploy and manage apis on the api products so what does this mean we can so api manager product basically helps you to define the proxies and uh, to your actual backend services that you can design how you are going to expose those uh, the services and you can manage uh, the apis also the api product refers to the uh, let's say uh, we have three uh, backend services that are having different resources and we would like to have a single api to have a subset of the resources from those three apis so that can be treated as an api product then we have an api based integration that is we can make uh, we can implement an api lead integration strategy uh, by easily combining the api management layer on the top of integration layer on the products platform next api discoverability so it is important how your apis are available to the end user here we are talking about the developers who can easily discover your api so wso2 api manager provides the uh, developer portal with the help of that your devel uh, the developers can easily find uh, the respective apis uh, exposing developer friendly api that means we can have a developer friendly uh, like uh, api exposure so that developer can find the relevant documentation of the api it could be a swagger it could be api documentation the resources and all the stuff next securing the apis 
which is a core capability one of the core capability of the wso2 api manager so it provides a lot of security on your api it could be a payload uh, security it could be a like uh, the ip address rate limiting okay we can have a additional uh, uh, like custom uh, specification for this uh, api security could be authentication and authorization next we have a rate limiting we can uh, throttle out the request beyond the quota assigned to the particular uh, api consumer api insights so wso2 provides api analytics dashboard as uh, spoken previous in the previous slides like uh, wso2 provides api insights with version 4 using the corio platform we can also see the same using uh, the wso2 uh, api manager integration with the elk based platform next integrate your microservices so wso2 provides a micro integrator product bundled with the uh, api manager version 4 so which is uh, previously it was a separate product coming with the wso2 enterprise integrator so with the api manager 4 wso2 provides a micro integrator uh, runtime as well that enables us to host composite microservices that can uh, harness the power of a load code integration approach so we can get uh, the benefit uh, of the micro integrator runtime for integration of the microservices using api manager so next integrate system in your enterprise so wso2 micro integrator can also be used by enterprises as a classic esb so when we deploy it as a esb it caters our message routing the transformation the message mediation, the orchestration, as well as the services and API hosting needs. And last but not least, leverage your real-time data. So WC2 also comes uh, with the stream integrator capability with API Manager 4. So we can have a stream flow designer and a stream processing engine with strong monitoring and analytics functions. So this was all about the capabilities of API Manager version 4. Now we'll look after the key concepts with respect to API management and how these concepts are being applied in WSO2 API Manager 4. So these are the basic concepts which uh, any of the uh, person working in uh, API management space should be aware about. So API which is application programming interface, we all know about this. It provides an interface so that your external uh, services, external user can interact with your backend business logic. Okay, so API resources, again, so resources are basically the business functions you have developed against a respective business requirement. So API lifecycle, that means uh, we are going to manage the lifecycle of the APIs. Okay, so lifecycle refers to different stages of the API. We can have a created state, we can have a published state, we can have a deprecated state, okay, we can have a retired state. So all these are the different states of a uh, lifecycle of an API. The application here refers to the logical uh, grouping or the collection of the APIs that can be exposed with a single authentication endpoint. So, for example, there are three APIs and we would like to have uh, same uh, uh, the credentials to be used for accessing all those APIs. So we can create a logical application against those APIs and we can subscribe them via that application. So, API product again it's a, it's a one of the uh, the powerful capability or the concept uh, so let's say you have three apis okay and all those three apis have different five resources so total 15 resources are there so what if there is a requirement to expose uh, a single api with two res two resources each from these apis that is six resources uh, so how we can do that so here the api product concept comes into the picture so that can help to uh, expose those particular resources against a respective api name okay so access token is the is the way we can secure our apis and the validation happens normally at the gateway level which is api gateway level api visibility is something like uh, whenever you are going to create an api we can define how which users which set of users can see our API via our developer portal, okay? So any of the API management platform can have this feature so that uh, the discoverability we can can be implemented in a more, more fine 
green manner rate limiting so we can have a this is referring to refers to the throttling of the api Corio connect it's a cloud based platform provided by wc2 for the analytics and other co other integration capabilities then workflows refers to uh, the policies that we can implement so that any request or any action can requires approval can be implemented using workflows we can have a mediation policies like uh, the routing logic we can have so any request which is inbound to the api gateway we can define which set of policies can be implemented before the call and after the call a handler basically it allows a message to be processed before passing it to the routing logic of the api gateway and handlers can be used for the security validation policy enforcement and like custom logging requirements etc a handler basically allows the processing of both uh, like a request and response messages then we have a tags so tags are basically helps you to filter out your apis in the developer portal so let's say we have uh, 20 apis five belong to a one particular uh, set of categories and uh, three belongs to a particular category and we would like to see uh, a particular set of apis at a time so tags helps you to filter out those apis in the developer portal next we have a service catalog so, so the service catalog is the main attribute which enables the api first approach or the api first integration approach in api manager so the through the service catalog integration services are made discoverable to the api management layer so with the api manager we can go to the service catalog so all those services that are developed or are available that will be uh, discoverable through uh, this particular feature next we have a roles so there are different roles for accessing the api so there is a creator role so the person having the creator role can create an api the publisher role can publish the api subscriber role can have a subscription facility can log into the developer portal and subscribe to the apis and admin role is it's a it's a super user a role can be assigned so that's all about the key concepts and one of the key examples i was trying to refer to the api resources so here you can see get users list save user so these two are referring to the resources next let's check it out uh, uh, like the api uh, management layer architecture so uh, starting with the tooling so we have a tooling we have a management plane we have a data plane and we have a control plane okay so tooling is basically uh, the utilities provided to interact with the with the product so the the product the one of the tool is api ctl which is api controller which is used for the uh, devops purpose for like uh, code promotion api for one environment to other one exporting your apis from the api manager integration studio helps to develop your integration logic A streaming integrator integrator is a developer tool which is used to develop siddhi application and closely coupled with the streaming integrator cube ctl which is a kubernetes powered uh, the command line tool so the management plane is consists of the developer portal service catalog api publisher analytics and api operator the data plane which is an important one uh, which consists of the api gateways and uh, we have a api gateway layer then we have a streaming integrator micro integrator all the part of the data plane next we have a control plane which uh, which uh, consists of the traffic manager key manager ai capabilities and anomaly detection so all these although api manager has five core components but they are distributed across these different layers to uh, serve a different purpose So finally, we are going to see how an API gateway sits in an enterprise application. So this is a very very uh, fundamental uh, like architecture, where we can see that there is a client who is interacting to the API gateway layer over the internet. Here we are considering that the API gateway is exposed to the public internet, and uh, there are certain set of REST services, certain set of SOAP services. and certain set of microservices are running in a containers and in turn they are connecting or they are calling to a third party system over the cloud based services 
okay so that this api gateway all the uh, apis or the services are getting registered to the api gateway and that endpoint is going to be exposed to the internet over the uh, to the public over the public internet to the external client so that's all about uh, uh, this particular session so thank you very much if you have uh, any questions or uh, you would like to see more uh, information regarding this you can refer to my blog which is ktentechnical.blogspot.com and uh, there are, are tags to respective the contents which is ws2 api manager and please refer to the api manager uh, latest documentation as mentioned in the link so thank you very much stay tuned for the hands-on labs